I'm just trying to figure out how to make this like as um, silly and stylish as possible since like this is now my personality. If you know, you know. Let's get into it. Take, oh my gosh, it's falling. Take 84. <laughs> What's good, peacemakers? Welcome back to another episode of the Peace for Peace Crafting Podcast. I'm Michael, and this is my crafty corner of the YouTube universe. If you would like to follow me on other social media, you can do so by following me over on Instagram and threads as Peace for Peace Crafting, over on Ravelry as Peace for Peace Craft, and if you like music, you can follow along to the playlist that goes with this podcast over on Spotify at Peace for Peace Crafting Podcast Playlist. If you ever have trouble finding that playlist, you can always feel free to DM me over on Instagram and I can send you the link over there. If this is your first time checking out one of my videos and you enjoy the con the silly little content that I have here, please feel free to do all that fun YouTube stuff, like, comment, subscribe. I know I usually say that at the end, but I'm trying to put it in at the beginning this time. All right, friends. My chair is very creaky today. I don't know why I swapped it out for the other one that's so much more quiet. Anyway, how is everyone doing? It has been two weeks and I feel like I have done so much and nothing at all. Um, since the last time we gathered, things have been sent out to folks. I think that was in the last episode. Yeah, things have been sent out to folks. Um, thank you so much to everyone for the birthday wishes. That was very kind of you. I had a really lovely and relaxing day. Got to craft a bunch that day and met my roommates and two of my really good friends for um, a beautiful dinner at this like nice, yeah, nice, it's like mid, mid price tier. Um, vegan restaurant which was really cool i'm not vegan but i like plant-based foods a lot and so i went to this place earlier in the year and decided oh i want to go back here again and so that's where we went and then me and a bunch of friends went to and i think i talked about this a little bit we went and uh did a tufting or had a tufting party like we had the party room and there were nine of us including myself um, who came together and we all tufted fun little things and so that was really that was a good time I did a I think the last time I showed my koala that was a small and so I upped it to a medium since I feel like I had a little bit of experience did not finish by the time that they were gonna close so I had to go back again uh, I think I went the next day or the day after. They like allot you a little bit of time if you don't finish. You can like come back and finish your work. I didn't have much more to go on my rug, so um, yeah, it didn't take me very long. And then my friend who went was called me like, cause he was gonna go finish his, like I think we, we went on a Saturday? No, yes. We went on Saturday, I went back on Sunday to finish mine. He was gonna go on Tuesday to finish his, decided he didn't want to, so I went back on Tuesday. It's like, I spent way too much time at this place and it's all been great. <laughs> I've had a wonderful time. So, um, much like the last, last episode, I hopefully will have those um, finished. Well, they, they're they like finishing them. Hopefully they will call me and let me know and I can go and pick those up and then I can show them with you. I'm super excited about the one that I just did. I'm really happy to, I think I'm gonna use it as like under my spinning wheel. I think I talked about this just as like a little mat for it. Not that it needs it, but 
I thought it would be kind of cute. And then the other fun thing I did was I finally went to, um, we have a singer like factory outlet, not outlet, like distributor place, I guess you would call it. Here and I finally, after having my sewing machine that I got uh, sit and hang out <laughs> for so long after getting it cleaned and making sure that it worked, I went and took a one-on-one -on -one how to use your machine class, which was a lot of fun. Um, just like learning about the machine for anyone that's asking. I have a Singer 648 is the model. So it's an older model. I think it's from the 70s, I want to say. Um, and from what they told me, they didn't make very many of them. Or like that style or something. I don't know. Anyway, it works. There were a couple things that we thought maybe I'd have to have it sent back. Like dealing with the bobbin on the inside um but it ended up being fine and yeah so i'm really excited about that i did sign up to take um they offer like a four week sewing class there and so starting in may i'm gonna do that on the weekends which i'm really excited about um yeah so it's just another little crafty journey that apparently i think that i need to be on but I am really excited to start going down that path and just like making more things for myself, which I think, yeah, is the ultimate goal, truly. <laughs> I wanna be able to just like make all the things. So that's that. With that being said, long pause. Um, I got a few things done. So, well, that's not true. I, I worked on a few things. Not done, just worked on. Uh, one finished object and then like a lot of things that are I'm, that I'm working on around these parts. So, shall, I think that's it. Like catching up, this is what I've been doing. Um, you all know, if you've been here, you know how it goes. Like if I think of something, we're gonna talk about it. Uh, yeah, all right, let's get into it. So the first thing is, last time I showed you all, I've been taking like some leftovers that I have wound onto a toilet paper roll, which I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get the leftovers off of said toilet paper roll so I can start a new sort of like zombie leftover thing on a bobbin because I just think that that would be better than doing it on a toilet paper roll. Uh, and so I've been combining leftovers from other spinning projects with this like light gray and dark gray that I had from another spin that I was doing. And I've run out of the light gray. And so hopefully one of my local yarn shops carries that, it's just like wool fiber that you can go and, you know, they weigh it out for you and you take it or whatever. And well, you don't take it, you pay for it. Um, so I think I'm gonna go back and just get a little bit, maybe like two ounces of each color um, so that I can have a little bit more to finish off these braids. And so I finished, or I made another little Frankenstein braid, little little just like scrappy braid or a skein, I should say. Uh, and this is, I have it written down in my little book. So this little number, I don't know, I don't even know what all the things are, like I said, because it's all just, um, randomness is a it's 58 grams and it's about pre-washing it was 184 yards so it's less than that now probably um but i'm just gonna what i think i'm gonna do is i'm going to finish off making these little little one-off skeins of my leftovers with this gray and this well, with these two grays and then i'm gonna see how much yardage i actually have between all of them and then just like do something with that so it'll be like i don't know just like the randomness of it all um because they're all ending up to be about a sport ish yeah, fingering sport weight. And so I think if I just take all of them and combine them into one project, it can be like its own little thing, um, depending on how much yarn I actually have. Yeah, that oh, maybe it would be fun as one of those 
support chickens. That could be cute. Anywho, I enjoy doing this. I'm gonna finish up the rest of it and then start like on a bobbin another little zombie skein since I have been doing a lot of spinning lately and just like enjoying that journey um, for me. So that's kind of the only thing I've finished. So now let's talk about some things that have been I've been working on. So spinning wise, I had, which I thought I brought in here. Everything is like all over the place now. Um, oh, here it is down here. So I had this fiber from, maybe I don't have it in here. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. I don't. <laughs> okay, so I had this fiber from Fiberpunk that I really wanted to spin up and it was a gradient. If I remember, if I have a photo, I'll put it here of what it looks like. Um, but it was a really cool, just like lighter blue to darker blue gradient. And it was, I don't know where the, my tag is. I think it was 75, 25 or like an 80, 20 of BFL and nylon. Um, and so I spun that into, or I split it. Okay, let me stop, freeze pause. I was, my initial hope was to do a three ply because that's my jam, I really love doing that. That's what I wanted to do with it. I tried to split it into three, I think just because of the way that I was doing it. And it was my first time working with um, something that had nylon in it. It didn't split very well. So I ended up just using the two halves. Well, it was like three. I split it into three. They weren't very even. So the two ended up being the same as the one. And so I just spun them as two. There we go. So these are the two spun up. Um, you can see a little bit. It has like, like the, the nylon a little bit. But in the inside, it goes. it's really light blue, and then it goes into this darker blue. And these I spun on, these are the Acre Works bobbins. They're so fun. Um, and honestly, I thought that these were gonna be done by the time that I filmed this episode, but I was having a little bit of trouble deciding if I wanted to either A, ply them together and just make a two ply out of them or if I wanted to chain ply them on their own and then I'd have two skeins to do whatever like probably like with socks or something with and I just couldn't decide and so these are just been hanging out <laughs> they're just waiting for me to figure out my life um and so once I they look pretty even honestly once I decide, I will, yeah, follow up with you all and tell you how these turned out. I will say for me personally, and, and I know that like I haven't spun a bunch of things, I found it just a pinch difficult spinning with the nylon, but that could have been just because it was my first time doing it. And so it felt a little slick for me and like I I changed my tension and things and all that and like tried to make, well obviously I made it work. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was just a little bit of a challenge for me but I stuck with it and I, it happened. So that's not to say that I wouldn't spin that again. It's just like now I have more information to help me for the next time if I end up with a combination that is, well, that was BFL and nylon. And so, yeah, just a little bit more info for me to take in, which is good. Uh, the next thing, and I've shown this, is I wanted to do a combo spin of these two braids. Ah. Um, what's happening here? And both, of, what's happening here? Both of these are from Into the Whirl, World. And so I wanted to do a combo spin with these two. Uh, this one is called 
uh, the colorway is The Empty Child and it's 100% Romney. And this one is uh, Arrakis and it is 100% Cheviot. And so I am, I wanted to do a combo spin to spin the two of, yeah, the two of these together. I will say I enjoyed spinning this, the Cheviot fiber, more than I like spinning the Romney um, so far. But I think I'm gonna try some things out for this next go round. I wanna try to like pre-draft this a little bit more. I feel like it was just a little bit compacted um, as I was trying to spin it. And so I saw some videos online, I don't remember who, um, of them like before they started spinning it, they steamed it just to like open up the fibers a little bit. And so I think that's what I'm gonna do with this. I'm just gonna steam this and try to pre-draft it a little bit so that then when I go to actually draft it or to spin it up, it will draft a little bit easier for me. Um, so far, I have, what I've done for this because I want it to be a three ply, I split both of these braids uh, into I did like two thirds and a third no is that true I did yeah. yeah 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 that's true so I did like two thirds and a third and then I took those smaller bits of each one and I split them in half well one of them I split in half and then the Chevy it was a little bit more and so I split it into three and so basically I spun like the Romney then the Chevy then the Romney then the Chevy whatever in that order and so the, this is the Chevy it on the outside of it so you can't see what's the Romney is spinning up like but I do love these colors um, together and how yeah it spun up I think it's pretty great so what I'm planning for the other bits of it is to spin both of these just end to end and then ply the three of them together. So there'll be, there'll be certain sections that have like more of the Cheviot with like one strand of the Romney and then vice versa. So then it'll be like two strands of the Romney with one strand of the Cheviot and it'll just go back and forth like that. I think that'll make for an interesting braid or skein. I think to me that's sort of starting to become one of the fun things about spinning is because I'm trying to do it, you know, I'm learning, I'm doing things in different ways is um, like the colors definitely look one way on the fiber, but then when they're spun up, they look completely different. And then when they're plied, they look completely different. And then when they're knit up, they're completely different. So in my head, just trying to chop it up this way, I'm hoping that it turns out great. If not, um, then that's fine. I mean, for me, everything is just about like play and practice. And so, yeah, we'll see what happens along the way. I it can't be horrible you know what i mean like it'll be something at least interesting and if i choose to work with it i choose to work with it and if not i don't know maybe i'll give it away who knows uh yeah so that's that's it for my spinning stuff and i have one two three three little little three knitting projects that i'm working on so let's get into those whips you all today i'm having only because someone asked, and now I feel like I have to share. We There's a, I, I can't remember if I've talked about this before. There is a local coffee and tea, like spice house shop here um, that I love going to and have for many, many years. Um, I used to get um, like regular coffee there all the time. They usually have deals and stuff. And you know, they have just like the big barrels and then they scoop it out. Oh, so amazing. They have flavored coffees and whatever. So many teas, so many spices. Um, they have an, I know it sounds gross, but they have an orange flavored coffee, both in the regular and the decaf. That is just like 
it's so good love it so much but i've been getting a lot of teas from there lately um like herbal teas and i went off of recommendations this time and the woman that was working there recommended this um ginger carrot something the tea and it's delicious so i'm having that today yummy 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 all right so where to start with the whips let's start here since it's right on top so socks have not gotten as much as i want done but that's all good things happen at the speed that they need to happen right right so i'm already holding them up so these are my <laughs> uh woolens and nosh uh, club color. This is from January and this is hashtag Wes Anderson style. Again, this is on her 9010 Targi nylon base and it's 411 yards for 100 grams. So my socks, as always, I do them on a US 1 toe up. Starting with 14 wraps, I do a Turkish cast on and then I increase to 68 stitches. I knit, 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 knit. Uh, until I get to seven and three fourths of an inch from the toe and I place my heel heel markers um, these thankfully ended up being right in the middle of a brown stripe so the mini was this brown so that is perfect then the stripe and the heel will blend together um, yeah so I don't have much more to go on these actually I think I'm going to continue on with uh, the main, obviously the main skein, with the stripes uh, for like the rest of the repeat and a half. So I'm here on the repeat right now, like after the heel, starts at the yellow. So I might even just do the rest of the repeat and then call it a day, then start the ribbing for the top. So hopefully the next time you all see these, these will be complete. It's been nice sort of slowly getting back into just like the amount of knitting I was doing at one point. Um, yeah, I still don't feel like 100%, but I definitely am like, I can knit as tolerated, you know what I mean? And now, especially since I'm switching and do, I've been doing a lot of spinning lately, it's definitely been helping me and it's been great, so thumbs up for that um, <laughs> all right so next up let's move to this you all this is the dotted rays by Stephen West this pattern it's in black and white it's horrible you can't really maybe I do that that's sort of what it looks like why waste the ink and print it in color so I'm knitting this for a friend and uh, so many things to say about this. I'm using Beehive Yarn. They picked out the colors. Yep, yeah, Beehive Yarn. And uh, this is on the 80-10-10, so 80% 10, so super, super wash merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. Um, the dusty base. And <clears throat> it's 400, no, yeah, it's 437 yards for 100 grams. And the colors are, oh, what's this? Ugh. No, I don't have the tag. That's that one. Okay, so Raven Red is this one. This is Tapestry. And then the third color is this Sunflower. And so I started this and like I've made this a few other times and I had just in looking at the pattern and trying to gauge how much I wanted each section to section to be I think I freaked myself out and cut the first section a little bit or the first color that I wanted to use a little bit short because with three skeins I should have should have had more than enough to like finish the shawl a hundred percent but I think because I stopped short of the first color that then led me to run out of the second color 
like as I was going. And which then once I did the math, I was gonna run out of like the other color too because I did, I just like, I just, I poorly planned. So a project that was supposed to cost me nothing but my time ended up costing me because I had to go back. And thankfully the local yarn shop that um, carries this yarn had the color still there. Um, so I ended up having to purchase a couple, but that's fine. I think in the end, it's gonna end up, it'll be worth it. And I can use the leftovers of all of it to make this person a hat to go with it. So it's gonna be hard to show because it's scrunched up on the needles, but here's where I am with that. So it starts, <clears throat> because it's in short rows, it starts with this red. Now, this is what I'm saying. This section here, that's like the red and the tapestry, the way that it fades into each other, probably should have just been red, and then I would have started it here. We live and we learn. Uh, so the red goes for a while. I mean, you we still get like a few big chunks of it. And then it blends with the tapestry color and then I've done the tapestry color, so the green marker is where it was last time. It looks like it's not a lot, sort of, um, but because of the short rows, it actually is a lot of knitting. Like this whole side is just, let me see if I can, is like so much knitting. Um, and so, yeah, the tapestry color is gone and I just finished the tapestry and the sunflower together is this section here and now which I think looks kind of cool um, and so now I just have the final two wedges and the bind off to do which in looking at the pattern it seems like the last two wedges actually it's written in there is like 200 and something and then another 200 and something so I definitely needed more of the of the of the sunflower in all honesty it probably should have just been that last section and the bind off was the sunflower but again it's fine they'll get a hat out of it as well it's all good so i'm really loving this i love working with the yarn i think it's absolutely gorgeous it's stunning um it feels really nice and to me this is <clears throat> like an at home mindless knit I usually, to keep up with the short rows, you can sort of see here, there's like the little gaps in where you're going to turn the work and keep going. Um, on the wrong side, on the way back, like let's say this row, um, I'm gonna go, I don't know, uh, 14. 14 stitches before where I did my last turn, on the wrong side, on my way back, I will just count the 14 and then I put a stitch marker. So then when I'm on the right side, I'm just knitting to the stitch marker, turning. So then I, I, I can count on the way there. On, I can count the next row, like as I'm finishing up, you know, that pass. And then I don't have to sit and go, oh, is this 14 before? Because sometimes I scrunch stuff up on my needles and I'm knitting. So sometimes I don't want to like pull it apart or like look and see on the other side, like, oh, and count. I don't have the time for that. I'd rather just count there, put the thing, and then go, and then I can like be mindless for a while. Anywho. So yeah, this is coming along. This will probably, not probably. You guys, this has to be done. I've had it for too long. The person that I'm making it for is like, oh, is it almost finished? Which I don't mind, but they do know that like I was hurting for a little bit. But it is one of those things that I'm like, Oh, this is why sometimes I don't, and I don't, this isn't, they have not been like hounding me, so it's a negative thing, but like sometimes I'm like, oh, this is why I don't like making things for other people when they ask me, because then like I'm on their time and not on like my own crafty time, even though like they're not putting pressure on me at all to, <laughs> to finish it. They're just literally wondering when they're going to get their item. Um, oh, and then I just popped something off my bag. Um, so I just need to finish it for them, which it'll happen soon enough. Uh, I'm gonna hold off on putting that back on there. 
All right, so that's my dotted rays. The last thing that I'm working on is, let me find a photo to show, is the Traveler Shawl by Andrea Mowry. So this, what is this part? Uh, it's okay if I fold the pack. Can you see that? This is the Traveler Shawl and where am I? So I know how to, oh, here. And I, it, the sample was knit up in Andrew's hand spun, and so I um, thought that I would join in the fun and make my own hand spun. For those that have been here, you'll remember I spun, I did this combo spin. Uh, I took three braids, uh, Alexandria Art of Yarn, uh, the one that I don't know how to properly say the name of, and then the um, 316 dice. Hand dyed studio dye three. I have a tag here. Yeah, three sixteen dye studio. Uh, so this is like uh, there's merino, there's yak, there's silk, there is BFL and uh, what was the other one? BFL and I can't remember now. something that I liked spinning. Anyway, I spun it up. I made this little braid. So this is, that was it in the skein. This is it in the cake. Looks really nice. And I got a little bit of work on this. Honestly, because I'm trying to finish that dotted raise, I sort of stopped. Well, also because they're both done on size sixes. Um, I was like, oh, I need these needles. So I did get a little bit in and then I stopped. And then when I pulled it out to like look at it um before doing this I was like oh right this is gorge uh so here's where I am with that ah! Can you even? oh my god so um the little me winning. Uh, this is a Whitney Marie Anderson charm. Low key, I need to get more of these from her. Uh, that's where I was last time. And so I've, yeah, I've added, I need to put this on a longer cord actually. Um, I've added a bunch to it. I'm loving how this is knitting up. I think the colors, I think my hesitation in the, I was really nervous about the white that's in here. I think now seeing more of it knit up, I don't mind it at all, like at all. I think it looks really cool. I think the colors look awesome because this was smaller, you know, you're getting bigger chunks. And now that the, the shawl is growing, it's starting to be like smaller bands of the color of the color and I think that that is just looking really awesome. So yeah, I'm just gonna keep chugging along at this. I think once that dotted raise is done, I will get to spend more time on this. It's knit on US sixes. Um, I'm doing it out of my hand spun. So this is a this is like a sportish weight. Um, and so for now, I'm doing the smaller size that's written in the pattern, depending on my yardage once I'm done, I may, once I go to pick up, pick up for the larger size, uh, if I think that I'm gonna have enough to actually complete it. Otherwise, I can just do the small size. We'll see as I go, but I am enjoying it. I think it's very, I was gonna say what's on there, but it's nothing. It's very relaxing. I think the fabric it's making, is really great. Um, I'm gonna move this just while we're sitting here chatting. And yeah, I can't wait to work on it more. I'm I'm really excited. I was telling my roommate, um, cause I was showing him, I was, watching, I was watching something about spinning and he was saying, oh, it's so great that you're doing it so much. And so I showed it to him. He was like, that is just the wildest thing ever. Um, why was I saying that? Oh yeah, I'm just enjoying watching it like 
Oh, because this is the the big a bigger project of me using my hand spun. So I've only knit socks with my hand spun before, just and just once. And so this is my second time actually using like something that I've made. And yeah, it's quite exciting. I think it's kind of small, but I know like after blocking and like I have so many more of these repeats to go um, that it will get bigger. So. I'm probably gonna be eating my words later, but yeah, I'm loving it. I think it looks really great. So that's that. Um, friends, this is like kind of a shorter episode. I feel like I don't have really much to share. Or I mean, that was a lot, but yeah, I feel like that's kind of it. Um, yeah, the last thing I have for you all is a little music recommendation. I don't, I haven't acquired anything, which is good. Yeah, I'm about to like order some stuff um, for this sewing class that I have in a couple of weeks. So that's just gonna be like random stuff, like tracing paper and the pattern I need to get. And hopefully I can make a trip to Aunt Joanne to Look at some fabric for the, I think we were making, or the pattern I'm making is pajama pants. So for that, and like I need to get, just like random stuff for that. Um, for future. Yeah, that's about it though. Uh, so the last thing I have for you is a music recommendation. And this week, since I, since last time speaking to you, I saw the preview for the new Beetlejuice movie. And if I'm being honest, at first, because I only watched the first two episodes of the show Wednesday, and I saw that the actress who was in that show is was is gonna be in this like n not new version, but like this new movie of Beetlejuice, I was kind of like, ugh, I'm not gonna see this. Like the the old one is just like so good. Let's not mess with it. But then my girl, Catherine O'Hara. I saw her and I was like, okay, wait, uh, I will see anything that she's in. And um, Winona Ryder. So it's like, and my, it's like all my faves from the original. So I'm very excited. I hope everyone's back. Yeah. Um, anyway, that, seeing that preview led me to this episode's music recommendation and so i'm going to recommend harry belafonte's calypso album uh because beetlejuice and um so obviously the song that i that i have to recommend is deo so good um and i will also recommend will his love be like his rum will his love be like his rum fun song and the last one I will recommend is man smart woman smarter so fun like it just it's it's giving shoulder shimmy music and we could all use a little bit more of that in our lives so again that's Harry Bell ah! Harry Belafonte's Calypso album Deo will his rum be like will his love be like his rum and man smart woman smarter Go check it out. I will pop those into the Spotify playlist that goes along with this for all of my friends that follow along there. So you can check out those songs. And um, if you don't know, uh, if you ever want to check out the full album from listing it in the playlist, you can always click on the three dots that are on the side of the song and a, and a list will come up and you can say view album and then you can go to the whole album. It just makes it easier instead of like searching if you don't have the time for that. Because sometimes we don't have the time um yeah otherwise i think that's it for this episode you all thank you so much for spending a little bit of your day with me again if this is your first time uh watching or you've watched a few times now and you haven't done so already please feel free to do all that fun youtube stuff like comment subscribe and i hope that's oh another thing if you've made it this far another thing that we did oh my goodness i can't believe i forgot this is thank you to everyone that showed up for the uh, uh, craft day. It was so nice getting to hang out with so many of you for, I think we were there for like an hour and a half, a little over an hour and a half, just hanging out. Um, my time got cut short because I had to go run and finish 
uh, tufting my rug. But I hope to do another one of those in the future just to sit and hang out with everyone because I did have such a good time and it's such a great way to build community. And I think um, the things that were shared from people and just like hanging out was very supportive. And yeah, it just means a lot to me. And I think to the people that are there too. So in the future, there'll be more of those um, just because I had so much fun and I think everyone else did too. And yeah, so look out, hear out, look, look, be on the lookout for another one of those Maybe not this month, maybe next month, maybe in May. We'll see how I feel. Uh, other than that, you all, now I'm rambling. Um, I hope you all have an amazing two weeks and you get to do something fun for yourself. And uh, yeah, actually try to do something fun for yourself. Try to do something that is um, embodies an element of play in the next two weeks. And um, yeah, I'll meet you back here. So until then, make a peace, spread some peace, peace.